Mm. Oh. Oh. There we go. Oof. Get all the activity on the bottom. I love catching them a lot of different ways. But when you're winding a big plug and they freaking lock it up, something about that. Too foggy. Too foggy. Holy balls, the water's 47. Roll with Morgan. Go ahead. <laughs> Will you move back a little bit? Can you stay on the engine? What is up, MFers? Welcome back out after the major Texas cold front. We got Coleslaw the ripping camera guy finally back on the boat. He's been editing all the ice fishing videos, just loving his life, but he's back and ready to rip some damn lips today. Speaking of rip some lips today, that's what we're gonna do like we usually do. But the thing is, there was that giant cold front the last week. It's been raining down in the freaking 20s, 30s here in Texas. Nastiness. The water temperatures dropped 13 degrees in the last like eight days since I was on the water last time. When we dropped the trolling motor this morning, 47 degree water temperatures. Not exactly the most ideal, but we're gonna make the most of it. We're gonna catch them on maybe some non-traditional ways people think of when you get out on a cold front. I'm gonna show you how you can catch some of the biggest bass in the lake with the water this cold on giant baits like this right here. It's gonna be a damn fun one. Oh, by the way, quick before we jump in the fishing, I wanna let you guys know I'm picking my new boat up from Boatworks next week. I'm trading this one in, getting my new one. I'm freaking jacked. It's got you guys' faces, all the members' faces on the side of it. Um, it's got a really cool surprise I'm gonna show you guys on the inside. And I absolutely loaded to the gills with everything, um, electronics-wise, power poles-wise freaking everything i cannot wait to get this boat but one thing um, i was sure to get before i did anything and something that you guys have been getting a lot of as well is those powerhouse lithium batteries and specifically that 16 volt lithium battery that i use to run all my electronics on guys it's the only one like it on the market it's a 16 volt electronics only and it's what i run everything i run two graphs in the back two in the front Pan Optics, Humminbird 360, runs all my electronics back there with the live wells and everything. I've never run it past like 60% in a day either, guys. Absolutely killer. And not only that, it gives me the best image so I can see everything on live scope. It's like supercharged 16 volts. Everyone else has got 12 volts running to their, their, their sonar units. You can have 16. So I'll link that below for all you guys. I know it's the time of season when people are getting new boats, they're rigging new boats, and you guys are constantly messaging me about those lithium batteries, what ones to get, what ones I use. I use a 16 volt lithium um, for my electronics, 12 volt for starting and got 236 volts uh, for the trolling motors. And of course I use those run and gun systems, which absolutely necessary, runs off the alternator from my starting battery to my electronics battery and to my trolling motor batteries. So if I ever would run out, if, the, if something would happen and the 16 volt would die, I can just hop on the engine and go idle around for like 20 minutes and the whole thing would be charged for the rest of the day. Pretty badass deal. Okay, let's go rip some coal. Hi, bud. Little guy. But it's a fish. He was aggressive too. Something cool. Aggressive for a freaking cold front. Oh. A small mouth, a large mouth, bass mouth. We're on the board, Cole. There's definitely a lot of good fish kind of blasting around, but I don't think they're in the mood to bite quite yet. I'm just gonna jerk bait a few that I can see on scope for now. <laughs> watch this, Cole. It's gonna be a long process. I need you to watch it. They're loaded up right there. And they're blasting tilapia. They're gonna catch one first cast or they're not gonna touch it. Probably the latter. something that Connor on my 
500 dd last night first cast in the spot freaking dunk and it was just like fought it for like 10 minutes and i never saw it i saw it on scope though i think i snagged a catfish in its tail and lost it of course there we go that's a big one it was kind of like this freaking donk that one's all locked up right in his mouth, though. That's where that one's locked up on the 500. That's what I'm talking about, coleslaw. Cut those, like, five casts I made before this out so I look smart right there. I don't look smart very much, so. You just had to put it on. Just had to freaking cast it where one's mouth was. He's over there on the other side of the lake, I think. Freaking dogging me. Same thing I did last night with the damn catfish I snagged for half an hour. This one ain't no catfish though. This one of them Donkey Kong is on the 500. You're gonna like this pull I've been practicing. Freaking fighting this morning, huh? Oh, yep, yep, yep. Look at that one. That's what I'm talking about. Saw him freaking loaded up. Not very thick fish. He needs to fill out a little bit. But when you get the old 500 down there, it's only 10 to 12 feet deep here. This thing runs 20 plus feet. But I want it on the bottom grinding this time of year because the fish are on the bottom of the damn lake in this spot anyways. I'll have to show them to you on scope in a little bit. But that's the damn results right there. You bet. I love catching them a lot of different ways. Big swim bait, punching's fun, top water's fun. But when you're winding a big plug and they freaking lock it up, something about that. Something about that, Cole. Do I got a scale in here or did my son throw it in the lake last night? Not my new scale, actually. What are we starting with this morning? Seven and a half. Lick my ass, Cole. Seven and a half. Cole's been looking at trouts too much. 844. Bitch ass Cole. <laughs> yeah, bud. Right here. Boom. We're back. I was here last time and the water was 10 degrees warmer, but it was like more wintry and they weren't as far along in their progression. Sometimes I feel like just be, they wouldn't touch a deep crankbait. Sometimes just because you're further along in the year, they eat stuff that they get a little bit hotter on, even if the water cools down. Or they just wanted to eat that one today. But the moon's full, so we ain't catching big ones today. Full moon. Cool. Should we show scope really quick? See, that's a bad comparison because there's a big one up there. It's probably a gar up top. But this is what I'm talking about with live scope, guys, is I pan around. Look at all the activity on the bottom that's why i want my bait on the bottom the entire damn cast because there's nothing up high right now it might just be a morning thing but it's probably a cold front thing there's a big one on the bottom right there her sister but these fish are all just like positioned on the bottom and they're eating bait that's on the bottom like those there in the distance that's probably a group of uh, tilapia out there and they blast around like crazy and they don't get more than a foot off the bottom usually this time of year. There's a bass back there chasing them. We going straight now? I think we're good now. Yep, there's my bait. Getting scurrying, blasting through bait fish. <laughs> Ran into that guy or flipped him around to try to come after or something. But later we'll get them to come up and eat a glide. As little as we had thought.
I'll go over there cool. This one's getting flipped. Didn't look like I had them very good, but maybe better than we thought. This is too much fun. I'm just freaking do deep crank bite. Dude. Dude. Oh, he's barely hooked. He's actually snagged. No, no, it's in his mouth. No, it's so cold. Hide him from these Tams over here, but not quite as big a fish. Six probably, close to it. This one actually is fat. Got a little bit more meat in his mustard. Meat in his mustard? Yeah. The mustard's down. See, that's what I'm talking about right there, Cole. That's mud. It's mud. Just to see. I was telling Cole, I got all confused. I thought I was catching... 1.8 pounders in my tournament the other day and they weighed three six and, and confused the shit out of me I need to start weighing small fish like this so i can get a good idea how much they weigh seven. dude he is seven seven twenty eight the world deal another big one on the old 500 dd there's no way those won't eat a line through I said, no way. The only way they won't eat it is if I don't get it to them, which is probably what just happened. Catch me a tilapia. Come get it. <laughs> it's too fucking sneaky, Cole. I'm too fucking sneaky for my own good. Just drop a six cents line through right down there. Oh, there's a group of fish. All right. Did I? I just tied this on, right? He snout hooked. Fat boy. No, he's not. Two pounds. No, you still got a chance. Six plus pounder. Fatty. We're getting close on the old line through. I'd say she works. This is the moderate sink. Even though I think we're only going to come out with two sink rates from the start because we got to tweak some plastic densities on the shallow one. Color schemes are getting dialed in pretty damn good. That one thought so anyway. Crappie or a tiny bass. That is a tiny bass. That's how it works, right? You freaking, it's a spot, isn't it? Yummy little guy throw at a million fish that are like, huh, not a chance, and he throw to one and he travels and comes and gets it. Spotted bass. And this little prototype jig head. Just gonna continue to put more work on it. See if I can lose some fish or break the hook. Haven't happened yet. Till this cast.